records and CDs. I also have a DVD collection. And over there, that's my ba bathroom. Laura Stewart is proud to give a tour of her room. She's 28 years old. She's only been out on her own for a year. She and her roommate, Moira Fuenzalida, moved into this condo last May. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a bit of a mess at the moment. We don't, didn't have time to do the dishes. I don't mind. I, I don't was mind. doing it when you came over. Oh, okay. <laughs> This apartment is more than just a place for Moira and Laura to live. It is the culmination of years of effort for them, for their parents, and an agency called Live, Work, Play. And Hallie Cotton joins me with their story. Hallie, good morning. Good morning, Kathleen. So why is this apartment more than just an apartment? Well, really, it's a dream that now has an address. I met Keenan Weller of Live, Work, Play several years ago during a story about preparing people like Moira and Laura to vote in the municipal election. And I met Keenan... He was talking to me. He was already working on this project to find a way to help his clients, these adults, move out of their parents' home into their own place. It took the right building. It took a lot of fundraising. It, it took that, that amount of money and a lot of planning to get here. And where is here? Well, it's a condominium high-rise not far from Britannia Park on the Ottawa River. So it's central. It's right on an OC, bus, uh, OC Transpo bus route. It's right beside the bike path. It's within walking distance to grocery stores and a mall. And these things are all really important to the goal of this project to help people with intellectual or developmental disabilities learn to live independently. Well, Hallie, they've been there a year, so tell me what you saw. Well, when I arrived, Laura was waiting for me in the lobby, and I got the impression she was pretty excited to show me her building. This is all um, in a box system. Sometimes we get the previous tenants' mail by accident, but usually it's pretty good. Uh, right behind you, all the... The social calendar here. Yeah. But people could attend if they feel like it. Okay. Well, that's interesting, a social calendar. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't sound like a typical high-rise at all. No, I mean, this is the kind of building where, you know, people have lived for a long time. There are lots of retired people living in it. Lots of activities, as Laura mentioned. There's shuffleboard and a swimming pool. It's the kind of place where people say hello in the elevator and tenants and owners of the condos, they, you know, they decorate their doors. Live, Work, Play picked this building very carefully, not only because of how central it is, but because of who lives in it. You know, it's, it's not housing, as Keenan says. It's a home for these women. You know, the, these women have lived with their parents their entire lives, Hallie. So how are they managing to make this place, as you put it, their home? Well, in, in many ways, just like anyone else would do, you know, they, they bought furniture, they've decorated. Uh, Laura showed me, you know, she has hundreds of dolls and figurines lined up in her bedroom. And then there are the family pictures. Uh, that is Laura's nephew. Yeah, that's my nephew. He was born August 30, and he's my first nephew, and, and I like him. You guys still have some Christmas decorations up. Uh, yeah, those are Moira's. I had no time to put them away. You're too busy. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right, so this is the living room. Uh, this we got from Ikea for what my sister and my mom need to have a place to stay over. This is the dining area? Yeah. Yeah. Do you eat dinner together? Uh, yeah, usually. Yeah, usually. I eat the, in the table. I sit here because we all have our own way of doing things. <laughs> so you heard that, right? They oh, each yeah. have their own way of doing things, uh, <laughs> even if it means eating dinner in front of the TV, if that's what she wants. And this is success. Uh, after a lifetime of mom and dad's rules, these young women are, are setting their own routines, organizing their own lives, even if it means leaving their Christmas decorations up until <laughs> spring. And Keenan Weller says that's pretty significant. Identity, I think, is lacking for a lot of people with intellectual disabilities. Uh, if you're living with your parents and you're in your 30s, and uh, maybe you don't have a, a full-time job or something else to stake your identity on, uh, to say, you know, I live here, and this is my roommate, and this is my stuff. And you'll hear the very specific descriptions of things in the, uh, in the units, and I think that's really important. Okay, so uh, Keenan Weller sees it as important. Uh, Laura, Laura and Moira, do they see it that way too? Well, they don't use words like self-identity, but they do talk about the challenges of leaving home and everything they were used to to move into this condo. I was a little nervous I mean, about the possibility beforehand, but now that I've been here a year, it's been great. What do you like about it? 
uh, it's easy to get to the, the stores are close by. Like uh, Collingwood or Bayshore or Lincoln Fields if we need to get groceries. Before I moved here, I I had I was dependent on my family to help me get around because I don't have a driver's license and I don't feel comfortable driving. But now that I have a bus pass, I can go anywhere I want to, within reason. You know, Moira had doubts in the beginning too, especially about staying alone overnight. That's despite the fact that she's 36 years old. And that was my big fear to stay on my own overnight. But I made it through, and now I'm used to it. One night I stayed by myself was kind of difficult, but I did it, and I keep doing it, and then now I like to stay by myself. I don't know. Think back. I remember the first time I was in my own place for the first time. I felt a little uneasy at first, mm-hmm. too. So, mm-hmm. And they, they sound proud of themselves, and I think rightfully so, confident even. So how independent have they become? Well, they still need some help. Um, meals, for example, preparing them. They have uh, help. Uh, social social workers and advocates come in once in a while uh, during the week to help them cook meals. You see, they're not comfortable using the stove on their own yet, although that's something they're working on. They're also working on things like sticking to a budget. But there's no question moving into this condominium has made, has meant a huge leap forward for them. We can get out, we can do the Friday night activities without having to depend on our parents for for drive. Do you ever get homesick? Uh, not really, because once every couple of months there's something going on in Perth, so I go home for a little visit. Do you ever get homesick? Well, not really. The I went uh, home for Christmas, and I stayed over my parents' place, but I was kind of missing here. <laughs> it's kind of surprised me. I wanted to go back. I don't know. It just I feel like independent and I miss my, my new place. Well, that's a good sign. Now, mm-hmm. you're back tomorrow to tell us more. That's right. Uh, Moira and Laura are not alone in this building. There are six more residents in three other apartments uh, organized by Live, Work, Play. Uh, and there are more people expected to move in by the end of the year. So tomorrow, we'll take a look at the bigger picture. We'll meet uh, two other residents, 29-year-old twins, Ian and Warren Murphy, and we'll also find out how Live, Work, Play managed to overcome some resistance from other condo owners in the building. Okay, look forward to it, Hallie. Thanks. Thanks, Kathleen. So Hallie Cotton, and we'll have more on this story tomorrow.